Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back. Today's video is a solo recording playing Gunbreaker, earning 11 kills to 1.6 million damage. I shall be covering my thought process and tricks used throughout this match. If you would also like to cast your vote on the next revisited guide, make sure to visit my community section. And hopefully this video can give you an idea of what the Gunbreaker is capable of. Enjoy your day, thank you all for the continued support, and I will see you all in the next one. For this round, I am playing the Gunbreaker during Seal Rock. So instantly, I need to decide on how to play around a 700 score limit. Unlike Ansel and Shatter with their 14 to 1600 scores, 700 can creep up fast, leaving far less time to farm battle highs. With that in mind, and while playing solo, I am pretty much locked into the tank junction. I want survivability. I want to be able to withstand damage while pushing ahead. If I am up front, those behind me will be more confident to follow up. My alliance is mostly long-range rolls, so my aim is to hit targets fast and rely on my team to finish them off. Nebula provides a defense and counterattack, and this will allow you to survive some insane scenarios, which is important for maintaining battle highs. Confidence is the key to Gunbreaker, but do not think of yourself as a true tank. You are a DPS with extra steps. As you can see, we are the northernmost spawn. You regulars to PvP will understand just how much this spawn gets spawn camped. Right out of the gate, I waste no time heading south to get ready for those Tomalev spawns. The beach cliff spawns in and my team are more than willing to take it. Moving to this location is great, as it is much harder for the cave team to sandwich us. And after an easy cap, a quick glance at my map shows the immortals are divided, and the Maelstrom currently have no way to move in giving myself free reign to move back to reclaim our Tumalift to the north. With my alliance backing me up, and no battle height to speak of, start by attacking those out of position. Singled out targets can drop within seconds. The more players you pick off, the easier the fight becomes overall, even when others from the enemy team come to aid them. And I already feel very confident with my team. They're behind me and focusing those who I dive. Double down is amazing in groups, but do not feel the need to hold on to it. That burst into a single target can be enough with team follow-up to prevent them from even healing. And right now we are taking advantage of the Immortals' confusion. They are spreading out all over the place. Punish this. Playing like this as a team, it does not matter who claims the kill. You will all be working at your battle highs very fast this way. I move in as the Immortals regroup. I want to keep this momentum going. I use my limit break here in an attempt to claim a few faster kills, but to also use myself as bait. Players cannot resist the urge to CC spam, and to burst down a Gunbreaker using their Limit Break. And it worked perfectly, as a Dancer and a Reaper waste no time to Limit Break me back. I have already timed my Nebula and my Guard around their burst. With four mana available to me, it would be a mistake to back off now. Instead, I send it into the enemy team. Again, aim to single out targets. One of the best ways to defeat tanks and mini rolls is by first burning down their supporting range. This way you also gain the numbers advantage, which will then turn into snowballing where you and the team can bounce from one target to another. Doing just this, I myself was able to jump to just short of a battle high free. After cleaning up this fight, I spot a Maelstrom's Reaper rushing in. This means one of two things. He is probably new to PvP and learning, or more likely, he is rushing into Limit Break. Rushing ahead, I take the Limit Break solo. Then, looking at the scores, instead of farming Blue some more, I use this chance to team with them against the Maelstrom. Right now, Blue are of no threat. So instead, in situations like this, 2v1 the enemy team. It pushes the second place team's score back down and will secure more battle highs. As you can see, the Maelstrom begin to panic. They spread and several players waste their limit breaks. We have done a great job as well at not being forced back to the north to get caught in a spawn camp. I am now at a battle high free and can begin playing more aggressively. Again, I use my limit break here to try and shut down a few extra players. I see my team is now divided, so in this situation, play to live. Give up this Tumalith and regroup north. There is no reason to give up my battle high free. Pushing north, you can see what is about to occur. The legendary spawn camping that always happens north on Seal Rock. So right now, I am not playing for kills. In this situation, that would be rather difficult. Instead, play to scare, bait out CC and burst damage. Tempt them to use their limit breaks. Basically, abuse the survivability of Nebula and battle high combined. In doing so, we pick off and push Red back, but do not give chase for too long, as the Immortals themselves are still giving chase. So now we turn back to engage with the Immortals, and right now they are overconfident, so I move out slightly towards the river, because now if I can wait out until the Immortals and the Maelstrom engage, 
my team can then start picking away at those less experienced players. When needing to retreat here, always head north towards the river around the rock. It is the fastest route from spawn for those rejoining and provides natural cover. Simply resist any urge to overcommit. The Maelstrom have flipped the lead for now, but do not worry. Play it slow and play to strengths. In doing so, I baited two Dragoons away from their alliance, and my team are doing well at picking off these kinds of players. I am about to hit Battle High 4, and you can see a few in my team with Battle High 5s. This next battle showcases the true survivability of Gunbreakers. I use my Limit Break to force the Immortals back, and they retaliate with their Warriors and Paladins crowd controls. Dragoons give chase with their limit breaks, and even a machinist try to bind me. All while at the same time, the Maelstrom push in as well. Keep note, my MP is always rather high. This is because I use Nebula and Guard well. Before re-engaging, make sure to wait out those cooldowns. Red have more control right now, so my trick here is to go full bait. Nebula stacks with Guard, meaning I am able to move in. Bait them into their CC and burst damage. With Nebula and Guard combined, I take next to no damage. Repeating these same few tricks allows me to keep creating space, and slowly but surely we are able to push back. Then, even during the Stam of Dark Knight, thanks to my battle high, that extra healing allows for an easy escape. During this time, the Immortals headed south. To obtain all the Tomaliths to themselves, again, do not worry. The scores are rather even, but my alliance has far more battle highs. Shortly after, I head back to spawn to clean up the few Immortals hanging round. Shortly after, I head back to spawn and in doing so complete my battle high 5. I will end the voiceover here as well, as this is the turning point of the match, repeating everything you have seen so far, only this time with more force. And keep watching until the end, as there is one glorious limit break on its way, in which I third party the other two teams, steamrolling into a well-fought victory, and never give up regardless of the score. I have turned many matches where the enemy team needed only two points to win. The final fights of any match are the true deciders. Everything you do beforehand is in preparation of that last 100 to 200 score. I hope this video gives you some insight into the playstyle of Gunbreaker. Enjoy the remainder of this round, and I will see you all in the next one.